Hello, this is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and I'm here to talk to you this month about feeling connected and the idea of how we all are connected through the universe, not just to people but to our environment and animals and plants and everything. And I've got a quote that sums it up beautifully. This is by Albert Einstein, the physicist, and it says, The human being is part of the whole, called by us the universe a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion, to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. And that quote really touches my heart, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And this idea of feeling connected is something that's been on my mind recently because my, my daughter was in a study abroad program in Russia during the time that the whole um, Japanese nuclear meltdown occurred, and I was very concerned for her safety and well-being, of course, as well as everyone in Japan. Um, but when we're a mother or when we're in a, any kind of family relationship and we are concerned about the safety of a loved one, uh, sometimes we don't realize how powerful our thoughts and feelings are for providing support for them. And I've been on the receiving end of being somewhere far away from all of my social networks when I lived for nine months in Switzerland at a time when I was a new mother. Um, spending uh, most of my time just by myself as a homemaker with the cat and baby <laughs> in a little apartment in Switzerland. So I know how it feels to be um, shut off and separated based on language and um, social groups and so forth. Isolation is very challenging and most of us humans, um, we realize it to some degree, but unless we go through a rather extreme experience of isolation, we don't know just how important the connections in our lives really are. And I've got some amazing research and books to share with you this month. Um, I think you'll be excited to hear about a study that I loved reading about having to do with fire walkers. These are people that walk across really hot coals and when they're doing that, uh, usually they can make it across this large expanse of flaming hot coals um, barefoot without any injury to their feet. And part of doing this is mind over matter. It's just recognizing that you can imagine that everything's fine. Just imagine you're walking on cool grass or whatever it is that the workshop um, people are explaining as instructions. What's interesting about this study that I mentioned in the June 2011 issue of Reality Shifters is that this time researchers were present monitoring the heart rate of the participants doing the fire walking as well as their groups of family and friend who were friends that were in the audience. And the amazing thing is uh, is that there was a synchronization of the heart rate between the firewalker and the audience. And that's just one way of seeing some very visceral physical evidence that that kind of um, energetic connection that we are so definitely aware of when, it's, when we're the ones that are going through something unusual, like living abroad or walking on fire, we can feel that connection. And I love that study for that reason. I've got some amazing books to share with you this month. I'm going to go through them quickly, although they deserve a lot more time than I'm going to give them right now. This is just a quick little intro. These are some of my favorite authors, too. This one is called The Bond. It's by Lynn McTaggart, and she's an investigative journalist who's turned her uh, focus of attention onto the field of consciousness and the way our thoughts and feelings literally change the world, which, of course, is the, everything that I love. So I'm a big fan of all of her books. This current one, The Bond, is fabulous because it talks about the positive benefits of being a member of a group that we all benefit from. So uh, things like taking turns, sharing, uh, giving, um, belonging, agreeing, these are things we do that are built into us. And when we do them, we get rewarded not just internally by all kinds of great endorphins and so forth and positive health benefits, um, but it's also a winning strategy toward life, as has been proven in some of the studies that she mentions um, in the field of artificial intelligence and game theory. So the winningest game strategies have to do with taking turns, sharing. Uh, when someone 
does something nice, do something nice in a recir reciprocal fashion. I love it. Th I think you're going to love this book too. I think it addresses some of the biggest issues in the world right now and also in our personal lives, as well as giving practical tips on how you can overcome things like depression and health problems because people, even in the highest risk areas of smoking and drinking and eating all the wrong foods, as long as they have tremendously close-knit social groups to support them, uh, they are. It's, it's as if they're in none of those high-risk categories. So it's well worth reading this book and learning some of the secrets and amazing things that Lynn McTaggart shares. I've also got another favorite author's book. This is the newest book by Fred Allen Wolf, another definite favorite author of mine, as most of you know, who've been following my reviews for a number of years. Time Loops and Space Twists is extremely unusual as a book because this book covers the question of how God created the universe, but it does so in layman's terms while including the mathematical equations required to really understand the physics behind what's going on. And I know it may seem like, how can you do that? How can you bring together the actual math and then put it in layman's terms? Well, this is the only book I've ever seen that attempts this. This is Fred Allen Wolf. Not only is he doing that, but he's also mentioning some of the ideas related to the Higgs field, which is cutting-edge research just in the last 10 years, and the newest ideas about tachyons and tardions, and the way that the future definitely affects the past, and causality is a thing that we can throw out the window. It doesn't matter anymore. Causality is not what we thought it was. Definitely worth checking this book out. And last but not least in the book review category, this is another favorite author of mine, Carolyn North. What I love about her books is her personal approach. I love her heartfelt stories. I like the way she shares things. Um, in this book, she has a story of what the day that the fences blew down in her backyard, as well as the neighbor's backyards. In fact, all their fences blew down. And so she came out of her house, and she was wondering, oh my goodness, are we going to fix all this? But before she could even start thinking about that, all of her, she could see her neighbors and notice their astonished expressions as they saw this Garden of Eden paradise that had opened up in their backyards. It didn't look like a backyard anymore. It looked like paradise. And I think that's a good analogy for how beautiful her book Serious Fun is in helping us understand that it can be a lot of fun to be green and that we can bring everything we've got in new creative ways to deal with some of the biggest issues on the planet, but taking it just slow and small, one step at a time, having fun with it in our own homes and families. So those are the books. And I've also got an amazing concept. If you go to my newsletter, this is the June 2011 issue, which is called, um, this month it's <coughs> Feel Connected. There is a award-winning link, which is given there, and it's to a website where you can test your your ability to empathize. You may wonder, why is that significant? Why do I care? Well, that's interesting, and it's, it has to do with this concept by psychologist Simon Baron Cohen, who has hypothesized and he's imagining that it could be possible that there is no such thing as evil, that there's only something called empathy erosion, where people lose the ability not just to sense how someone else is feeling, because that's just sensitivity, but to actually care, once you're able to sense how they're feeling, to feel what that feels like. And even if it's not the same culture, race, gender, or species as yours, to suddenly reach out and understand, I really love this tree. You know, I really love that person. And it ties in with some of the other ideas that what I was mentioning earlier from that book, The Bond, by Lynn McTaggart. These are big ideas, and I think they have the ability to help transform our world. And they certainly fit with my favorite question, which I'd like to leave you with this month. month. <laughs> Thinking of food, I guess. Um, and that is, how good can it get? So, until next time, I'm Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com. And how good can it get? Take care.